Hello guys and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. So what I have for you guys today is a pulse length detector. It acts pretty much like a DMOX. So basically we have one single input uh, which is just going to be a pulse and the machine is going to tell you how long the pulse is uh, with the many outputs it has. So as a demonstration here uh, we have a repeater set on one tick. So for one tick the first lamp is going to turn on for the two tick pulse, the second one will turn on. You get the idea. Three ticks, third lamp, and sorry, <laughs> four ticks, uh, fourth lamp. All right, so uh, a stone button uh, has a pulse length of 10 redstone ticks. So if we press the button now, it's going to activate the lamp number 10. And uh, for the wooden buttons, it's a 15 tick pulse. So it should turn on this lamp. And if you count the lamps, it's going to be number 15 in here. And the circuit is expandable up to uh, this one. I think it's 23 or 24. Uh, and there is another another version of the system that is only uh, that is also uh, also goes up to 25. And as you can see, the circuit is very compact and doesn't use any pistons. And this is the second version of the circuit. It's pretty much the same thing as this one, but instead of having this chain of observers uh, being down here it is uh, i just built it sideways so yeah with this one you can get dual output so output from either side you don't have to do that but uh, it's just one extra feature in here and it works the same let's just do another quick demonstration so uh one tick pulses will activate only the first one let's try three tick pulse only the third one and so on uh and because this pulse length detector is uh, a one wide thing we can actually use this uh, as a pulse length to signal strength uh, converter. So let me demonstrate in here. Uh, we'll do just four, but because it's signal strength, uh, you can go up to 15. Let's do a three tick in here. And this is going to be signal strength already. So this is all you need to convert pulse length to signal strength. Uh, but let's just do one extra setup in here. So, uh, is this on subtraction mode? All right. So if we do a one tick pulse here, uh, sorry, my mouse has been acting up. I need to fix that. So we get a signal strength of one. If we do pulse length two, we get a two here, three. And this would work uh, once again up to 15. Uh, the way it works is based on the fact that uh, redstone torches will not respond to one tick pulses which is the output of an observer so if i flip the lever here you can see that nothing happens no matter how fast i do it it's going to output a one tick pulse but if you offset two one tick pulses by one tick which is exactly what i'm doing with this circuit if you watch the torch now it is responding so here's how we build it so this block is going to be our input so we want to have a target block in here uh, and then this is a node block followed by an observer. And here is where you start chaining uh, as many observers as you want. So you can do uh, with this simple setup that I have in here. Uh, look look how, how, how cool it is. I'm using redstone dust in here. Uh, and then I use this uh, node block followed by uh, rails in here so that I can extend it up to 20, uh, 25, I guess, because we have 15 from these plus one plus nine so 10 extra blocks from the from this extension and there is no delay in between so this is pretty cool i could also add a probably a node block in here or maybe a repeater in here as long as i add another delay in there as well but let's move on guys <laughs> okay so up here we just have solid blocks with the torches and now to synchronize uh those pulses we're gonna use a pair of repeaters followed by this. You can either use a solid block or a redstone dust in here. It uh, doesn't matter. And then here is uh, something that can cause an update to observers. And uh, on this side, you need to put the, the uh, actually, this is, was not a good order for building, but that's okay. Because you need to have your observers facing this way. So yeah, let me put back the torches and you're good to go. <laughs> Believe it or not, the system is pretty much done and to filter out the pulses we need uh, those repeaters on 
uh, set onto ticks because uh, um, as a matter of fact this circuit is always going to activate two torches uh, side by side let me demonstrate here so uh, if this is the input let's try a three tick pulse and uh, maybe just create a pulse with this so if you watch now uh, we are supposed to see this guy activating which is exactly what's going to happen but it's actually going to activate this torch and this other torch Oh, see, the, the, two, the two, two torches got activated at the same time, but uh, I'm using this re these repeaters as filters because uh, those cannot the repeaters cannot be turned off by the half pulses. So yeah, this is how we filter things off. So this is uh, the entire circuit, and uh, if instead of having this like so, you kid, you want to have this be like this, the circuit works the same. The principle is the same. But now you can have your outputs be here or here and then you can have a setup just like uh, this one all right so this is the, the difference in there it depends on uh, how much space you have of course but yeah i'll just place some lamps in here just so you guys can easily see how the output works so i can run a quick test so number three in here should uh, turn on lamp number three, uh, which is exactly what's happening. So this is super compact, no pistons, uh, and very easy to build. So hopefully this helps you with your data transmission issues. <laughs> it certainly helped me with one of my recent projects. Uh, and by the way, guys, there's going to be another video tomorrow about data transmission. So make sure to not miss that. And if you liked this video, you can show me by clicking the like button, guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.